Unsharp Mask, contrary to what its name suggests, is a filter used to enhance apparent image sharpness by increasing contrast between edge detail. I'll show you a couple of different uses for it. First, let's tackle the most common workflow, which is to use Unsharp Mask with small kernel values in order to enhance fine detail. Now, I've done some layer-based editing on this image already, so I'll just make sure I have the background layer selected before doing anything else. This is because I want to apply the Unsharp Mask filter to the image data. Then I can go to Filters, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And I'll also zoom into the image so the results are easier to see. On the dialog here, there are three sliders. Radius determines the width or spread of pixels to operate on for each pixel in the image. To achieve fine detail sharpening when dealing with typical image resolutions like 16 to 24 megapixels, this value can generally be kept quite low, usually between 0.5 and 2 pixels. For this 20 megapixel image, I'll use a radius of 1 pixel. If you are working with larger resolution images, you may need to experiment with higher radius values, typically anywhere between 2 and 16 pixels. Factor then determines the amount of contrast enhancement to apply. So within this context, it controls the strength of the sharpening effect. You'll see this clearly as I move the slider and increase the value. Threshold determines which pixels are regarded as edges. At its default value of 0%, all pixels will be weighted equally for contrast enhancement. As I move the slider up, however, you will see this enhancement becomes more selective and affects fewer pixels. So once I'm happy with the settings, I can click Apply to commit the filter effect. If I now move back out to 100% zoom, the image has a subtle but sufficient increase in perceptual sharpness and detail. This is, however, a destructive operation. Now, Unsharp Mask is available as a live filter layer, which offers us much more flexibility. So, I'll undo this Unsharp Mask filter operation. And this time, I'm going to create an initial selection to restrict the filter to, so I can avoid over-sharpening the sky detail. I'll choose the Selection Brush tool from the Tools panel here. Increase the brush width. Then, quickly brush into the image to make a selection of the building. With this selection active, I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And before doing anything else, I'll clear my selection by using Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. I now have the same Unsharp Mask dialog down here, but in addition, I also have an Unsharp Mask layer that has been clipped into the background layer here. You can see it also has its own mask, represented by the black and white thumbnail here. Once again, I can zoom into my image here, then I'll use a radius of 1 and a factor of 2. I can then close this dialog down, and this unsharp mask filter is completely non-destructive. That means that if I click away, to another layer, at any point, I can click the Unsharp Mask icon and the dialog will return. And I'm then free to modify the parameters however I wish, without having to permanently commit them. I'll show you another example for when you might intentionally use a larger radius value. With this image, I'll select the background layer, then add a live Unsharp Mask filter layer, and I'll drag the radius all the way to 100 pixels. Now, using larger values will enhance local contrast, providing quite a strong apparent increase in structural detail. In certain cases, this may look desirable, but there is an issue that can be made more obvious by increasing the factor. And you can see here that we have some noticeable halo artifacts around the edge detail. This becomes even more obvious once we are zoomed in and we start adjusting the radius. With some clever blending, however, we can minimize the artifacts, allowing us to use these larger radius values more effectively. Now, I have the Unsharp Mask filter layer selected on my Layers panel, so I'll click the Cog icon here 
to access the Blend Options dialog. On the Source Layer Ranges graph, I'll click drag the right hand node all the way down. This is blending the unsharp mask layer out of the highlight and midtone detail gradually. You can, of course, experiment with the node positioning on this graph, but I will leave this as a linear ramp for now and close the dialog. Then click the unsharp mask icon to bring the filter dialog back up. Now notice that I can alter the radius and factor sliders whilst minimizing any obvious halo artifacting around the edges. Finally, zooming out to reveal the whole image, I may want to reduce the overall strength of the effect. I can achieve this very quickly by modifying the opacity of the unsharp mask layer. This is another reason to use the non-destructive layer application of the unsharp mask filter. It offers far more flexibility because you can experiment with the blending options in addition to being able to change the filter parameters at any time. And that was a look at the unsharp mask filter. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.